Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your NFL Fade the Public video for this week six, Sunday, October the 15th. We're inching our way through the NFL regular season. Week six is here. I'm going to let you know the most public sides this week. There are two games that are very public in week six and a third game as well, and then three additional leans. So we're going to break down six games for you, the six most public plays in the NFL for this Sunday, October the 15th. Quick reminder, give it a thumbs up, a like if you're finding this video useful. And don't forget to comment below. I read all the comments or I reply back. Let me know your thoughts. Where are your best bets this week in week six of the NFL? All right, we're going to start off with the two most public plays this week. I'm going down in rotation order, but it just so happens the first two games I'm talking about are also the most public plays by far. Two games really jumped off the board. They both go on the early card at 1 o'clock Eastern. And we'll start with as public as any play this week, the San Francisco 49ers take to the Cleveland Browns at 1 o'clock Eastern. And um, the look ahead, the opening line initially was going to be around three. Niners looked great last Sunday night against the Cowboys. Watson is now out, and it's up to nine and a half. Even 10 is starting to show. Um, and the 49ers are very public on top of that. So if you like the Niners, I would grab the nine and a half while it's still available. If you like Cleveland, uh, grab plus 10. If you don't have it yet, I think you will find it in more locations. But as I check the Wager Talk live odd screen on Friday afternoon into the evening here doing this video, uh, plus 10s are starting to show, and I like the Browns at plus 10. I, I think this is an overreaction uh, to what's been somewhat of a mediocre quarterback to start with. And let's not forget, the Browns are a very good defensive team. So this is definitely a good defensive home dog here. Uh, Cleveland Browns on the season, uh, giving up just 15 points a game and just um, four yards per play. So they qualify as a good defensive dog. And then on top of that, does not look like a great scheduling spot uh, for the 49ers coming off that Sunday night win national TV against the Cowboys is one of the biggest spotlight games of the season. And now they were more than a touchdown road favorite in a non-conference game. Uh, I like the setup here for Cleveland. I think this is a good spot to fade the public on Sunday. All right. Now the other most public play this Sunday also goes at one o'clock Eastern and it's not a surprise. It's the Miami Dolphins. First of all, public has been in love with Miami this season. They're a solid four and one straight up. They put up 70 points against Denver a few weeks ago. And they're also been fading the Carolina Panthers. Nobody is going to back the Carolina Panthers. And uh, this game is very public as well. So San Francisco and Miami, the two most public plays of the week. Uh, look ahead line was 10 and a half on this one. And it's now 14 across the board. Uh, hard to say there's much value anymore laying 14 in the NFL. Uh, but then again, I want nothing to do with Carolina. And the problem with the Panthers, as with some of these really bad NFL teams this year, is they have no offense, specifically no passing attack whatsoever. So when they get behind, they can't catch up. And the Miami Dolphins are probably the most explosive offensive team in the NFL, averaging 36 points a game, eight and a half yards per play. Carolina's averaging 18 points and just four and a half yards per play. And even worse, they throw for just 4.9. Dolphins throw for 9.8. Dolphins are literally twice as good throwing the ball as the Panthers. But don't worry, Carolina fans, you're not only 0-5, they're dumbing down the playbook this week. Uh, so yes, maybe they can keep it close running the ball against a mediocre rush defense. But once they get behind, as they probably will, it's going to be very tough to catch up. Uh, so once again, not a game I'll be interested in. Not looking to lay two touchdowns, but also really want nothing to do with this ugly dog. So hard to disagree with the public in this one. Uh, but once again, the Niners and the Dolphins, by far the two most public plays here in week six. All right, there's one other game that also was pretty public this week. I'll call it the third most public play this Sunday. And that's the Las Vegas Raiders. And this is more of a play against New England than anything. Las Vegas was actually not a public play on Monday Night Football. And the public lost going with the Packers. And now they're coming back with the Raiders after seeing them win on Monday Night Football. But I think it's more of a play against the New England Patriots. And look, Bill Belichick and company off back-to-back -back losses has been an automatic play for decades. Uh, it doesn't appear to be that way anymore. I did a solo standalone video earlier this week here on Wager Talk TV, breaking this game down in depth. So I recommend going back here on the channel after this video if you want more deep dive into this game. Um, on the surface, I do think the setup normally would be a good spot for New England, but how can we possibly trust the Patriots? Uh, this is not the same New England team that used to bounce back. Uh, they have absolutely no offense whatsoever. They're averaging 11 points per game, just 4.6 yards per play. But they actually have a pretty good defense, giving up just 4.8 yards per play this year against teams that average 5.9. And now they're taking on a Raiders squad that's been way below average offensively Raiders are averaging just five yards per play against teams that allow 6.1. So I do think New England qualifies as a good defensive dog in this game. And if you're going to play it, New England is my preferred side. So I have no problem fading the public here. I'm uh, not sure it's going to make my best bet card, though, because I just don't trust this Patriots squad. But keep in mind, they have had a six turnover to none disadvantage the last couple of weeks. 
and that can always make teams look a little bit worse than they really are. So I do think this is another situation uh, where you could probably take a look at fading the public. Uh, I would lean towards New England at plus three or more, which is the current line. All right, those are your three most public plays for Sunday, the 49ers, the Dolphins, and the Vegas Raiders. Now, once again, if you're new to this video, the premise here is that the public is normally wrong long term. And it's not just that they're wrong. It's that when we get a lot of one-sided action, the lines become inflated and you do get some edge and mathematical edge and especially line value going the other way. And I do think that's the case with all three of these games. Um, so once again, if you're looking to fade the public, the three most public plays are the Niners, Dolphins, and Raiders on Sunday. I'm going to give you three additional leans, games that were just a bit outside for making the cut in just a moment. Quick reminder, though, if you want my official best bets for this Sunday pro football, and shoot, if you're joining us early Friday night or Saturday afternoon, get my five college football best bets for Saturday as well, and you get an instant $10 discount on both Saturday and Sunday by using promo code SM10. That's Steve Merrill, SM10. You can use it on Saturday. You can come right back on Sunday and use it as well and get $10 off my Saturday college football package and then also get $10 off my Sunday NFL package. So no matter when you're watching this, early or late, it's not too late to save this weekend on my football best bets. Once again, get $10 off my NFL best bets instantly by using SM10, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's look at three additional public leans for you. I gave you the three official public plays for this Sunday, October the 15th, week six of the regular season. Three additional games just missed the cut here, and I definitely say these are the public side still, though. We'll start, by the way, all three are on the late card, 425 Eastern. Kind of weird how that worked out. The three uh, earlier games, and then now we got three later games here. And uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Detroit-Tampa Bay game first here. The Detroit Lions are a pretty public side uh, in week six as well. And it's not a surprise. Detroit's looked fantastic this season, really good offensive team. And they're actually a lot better on defense than people were expecting. Uh, solid all the way around. Laying just three points on the road against the Tampa Bay Bucks. And you can see why the public is jumping on the four and one lines. But don't forget, Tampa is actually a quiet three and one straight up this season. And they did have their bye last week, a very early bye, which I don't think NFL teams generally want. Uh, Tampa couldn't control this. But I do think it'll benefit them in this particular situation. Um, and yes, Detroit's only coming off the hapless Carolina Panthers. But as we talked about in the video last week, and I did a standalone video as well, that was still a focused spot for Detroit. Normally after the Green Bay Thursday night win, you would think that they would not be focused for a winless team. But Carolina kept them out of the playoffs last year. Detroit went 8-2 and two down the stretch. But one of those losses was against those Panthers in which they gave up over 300 rushing yards. So I thought that was a circled game. So you can make an argument they're coming off back-to-back -back big games now. The Thursday nighter at Green Bay, the home win against Carolina, could be a potential flat spot here. And the Buccaneers do appear to be a little bit of an underrated team, uh, not good offensively. Um, running the ball, especially is where they've had trouble. They've actually thrown the ball okay, 6.8 yards per pass against teams that allow just 6.5. And defensively, they've been above average as well, 17 points a game, just 5.3 yards per play. So I do think they qualify as a live dog here, a good defensive dog, especially if it is a little bit of a flat spot for the Detroit Lions. It's hard to have your A game each and every week. Uh, that's what the public expects, but we know the reality, and the public is on the Detroit Lions as well. I would lean towards Tampa at plus three or more in this game, another one which I think it is worth fading the public this week. All right, another late game at 425 Eastern this Sunday is the LA Rams, another public side. The LA Rams against the Arizona Cardinals. A look at line last week was going to be around four and a half opening line, and now it's up to seven. Um, obviously, a substantial move there. Now it's on a very key number um, at seven or more. You can maybe start making a case we're getting some line value with Arizona. The problem for me, though, is I just don't trust this Cardinals team, not a team I'm looking to back. Um, and this is another situation where I don't think the public is necessarily backing the two and three LA Rams. I just think nobody is playing the one and four Cardinals. And Arizona did look spunky the first three games. Uh, they won all three against the spread, but they were projected to be the worst team in football. Season win total around four, four and a half. And now they've gone 0 and 2 straight up in ATS the last two weeks against decent opponents, San Francisco and Cincinnati. Uh, they've lost those games by 19 and 14 points. Uh, so very hard for me to trust uh, the Cardinals in this game. Uh, and the public is on the Rams minus seven, but that line's starting to look a little bit inflated to say the least. All right, the final public lean. And once again, these are games that just missed the cup, but the public was leaning towards them. I know a lot of you are doing your own handicapping, so I always try to give you as much information as possible on these weekly videos. And we'll close it out with another 425 Eastern game this Sunday, week six. And that's the Philadelphia Eagles, the defending NFC champions at the New York Jets. And the public likes the Eagles. Uh, lined open six and a half, and it's pretty much holding six and a half across the board as I check the Wager Talk live odd screen on Friday evening. Uh, there are some sixes out there, 
So I'm not sure you're going to get to that key number of seven, even though the public is on the Eagles seeing six, six and a half. So I'm not sure they'll pump it high enough where we can get the Jets at seven or more. Uh, but the Jets, another bad offensive team. You know, obviously a huge blow losing Aaron Rodgers early in the season on the first series, basically that Monday night game a month ago. Uh, but they just don't have any offense. And this is a team that's on the season now averaging just 5.3 yards per pass against defenses that allow 6.5. Uh, Eagles are an above average defense against the pass, 6.2 against teams that average 6.4. So if the Jets get behind in this game, they're going to have a tough time catching up as they do against anybody. And even though they put up some points against the Broncos, I still didn't think that offense looked very good last week. Uh, we cashed an over best bet there for my clients. So I was happy to see the 31 21 final. And keep in mind, the public was actually leaning towards the Jets last week. That was one of the public dogs I mentioned on the video. And they did cash with them, but they're coming right back and fading them now. And they're on the Philadelphia Eagles, who have won five straight games. Uh, they've alternated wins and uh, covers. They've actually, depending on your line against Minnesota, it was a push. So they're either three, they're three one and one against the spread, five and oh straight up. Public's done pretty well with the defending NFC champs, and uh, they're backing them again this week. Hard for me to disagree, though, because if the Jets get behind in this game, they will have a tough time catching up as they often do. All right, those are the six most public plays this week. I gave you the three most public sides, three additional leans. We usually like to try to do a public underdog, but nothing qualified this week. Public is pretty heavy on the favorites, and it's not a surprise. The public has done very well so far in 2023, the first month or so, and that's often the case. You know, September, even October are usually the public months. Later in the season, as we go, we get more data. Public gets a little more cocky, more confident. That's when we find fading the public works even better. Let's see if it starts here in week six. I do think we're getting some adjusted line value in several of these games, so it would make the sense I think in some of these situations to fade the public. But once again, use it as a filter, as a factor, part of your overall handicapping approach and handicapping arsenal. And don't forget, comment below. Let me know where you agree or disagree with the public sides this week and your personal NFL best bets. Hey, throw in some analysis as well. I love reading the analysis, the insight. We can all learn and garner some information together to win this Sunday here on Wager Talk TV. And by the way, if you haven't hit subscribe already, please do so and hit the bell for instant alerts when this video goes live each week, along with my college football top 25 video. If you're watching this on Saturday or even Friday night, uh, be sure to check out my college football top 25 video as well as I analyze, I believe, uh, eight games in that video. Whew, a deep dive into some of the biggest matchups in college football. And if you want my personal best bets for this Sunday NFL Pro Football, go get them right now on my personal page at wagertalk.com and use promo code SM10 when you purchase any package this Sunday. You get an instant $10 discount on any of my NFL best bet packages this Sunday. And if you're joining us earlier, hey, you can use it on Saturday as well. Use SM10 on Saturday and get my five-for-one college football five-pack for a very special price as well. So once again, whether you're joining us Saturday, Sunday, or both days, use promo code SM10, Steve Merrill, SM10, at checkout for an instant $10 discount this weekend on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. You can always get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash SM. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, you know the drill, at Steve Merrill on Twitter or X as the kids are calling it. And also tune in all week long. We got tons of standalone videos here. I previewed numerous NFL games, college football games this week. In fact, we have every NFL covered with a deep dive solo video here on the channel as well. So stay tuned to Wager Talk TV all day and night, all week long for great football content. Thanks for watching. Best of luck. And I'll talk to you again soon right here on Wager Talk TV.